Hey friends, how's it going? Welcome back to another Animal Crossing Island tour video. This video is really cool. I know I say that every single time, but the creator of this island is an incredibly talented artist and I just can't wait for you guys to see how they bring their artwork into their design in Animal Crossing. And guys, what's on the screen right now is a piece of art by the creator and I want you to keep that in your head while you're looking at this island and while you look at how they actually designed it, you'll realize some similarities are there. And on top of that, at the end of the video, we have a Q&A with the island's creator, so do not miss that. They are super talented, and this is going to be really fun. And as usual, guys, if you like this sort of content, make sure to give it a thumbs up to let YouTube know you want to see more, as well as subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Even more importantly, if you're not subscribed yet, you're just really a silly billy. Let's just be real here. And we have arrived on this unbelievable island. Here we are, we have, <laughs> what do we have here? Straw umbrella hat <laughs> and fish bait. Oh, that's so kind. Oh my goodness, they gave me a gift too? Oh, that's so kind, thank you so much. I was not expecting that, but I guess my outfit already kind of matches. <laughs> thank you so much. So, first off, I just wanna say, this is a really cool city and they actually use those power posts and stuff like that really well. And I'm gonna forget, I'm gonna forget. All right, let's look at the map. <laughs> I almost forgot again. <laughs> wow. Wow, look at look at all the pathing they've done there. This is a crazy looking map. Look at all the terraforming. Look at all the height differences too. I am so excited for this. Honestly, I have, <laughs> I have no idea what's in store. This is gonna be so great. And now it's time for their passport. Okay, view another's passport. So an ominous presence. Oh. Oh gosh, they're a potato. The island, oh, the island's name is Potato. They're a chaotic wild child. Hey, I like it. I like it. And their name is Cheryl. And they were born January 27th. Now, we walk down here. Oh, they have sewer grates. I like seeing those. Oh, we're already at the museum. Very nice museum. Oh, is this like a little secret area behind it? There is. I can see the lovely pathing and everything. Oh, look at all the flowers on the beach. That is so great. So you just sneak behind here. Oh, this whole place is like little alleyways, isn't it? This is so cool. Jam-packed with all of these amazing parts. They lead us through. Oh, we have a little fish. Oh, lobster stall. And they have all this really nice place just to relax. And Oh, is this fish? Yeah, there's a little tadpole right there. And guys, just look at the landscaping they've done just just from here aren't you excited okay i think i have to <laughs> lead the way running back right now unfortunately we're having had a little bit of connection problems but we are back here with the creator and they are leading us properly and now we are going on this beach and they have placed mums and other flowers all over the beach oh wow this is a lovely little <laughs> hidden off area we go up here there's a workbench we have some peach trees on a second level it really feels like a really nice developed city. What? You actually, they actually have jumping areas in here. Wow, this tour is like its own adventure. Oh, we have more jumping. You know what this kind of reminds me of? You know how in Aladdin he was jumping around everywhere? I really feel like that's kind of like that. And now we're into this beautiful area. Going up into houses and <laughs> wow our tour guide is so fast <laughs> that's where we were before and they have some grates there for the water and wow guys look at this just take a look at that and we're gonna take out our ladder at this point and just look at this look at the, how the bridge looks and all the wood they've used this is stunning and they've kept the river going by using these grates that's really smart Wow, oh my goodness, more jumping sections. This is this is incredibly fun. And this is the famous library that I've been hearing all about. This is just absolutely something special. Honestly, look at this. Look at this library. I'm speechless. Honestly, I don't even know what to say. It was that is just unbelievable. And there's the book club <laughs> little sign there. And we have this Okay, I have a thing for diagonal bridges. Everyone knows that. And just look at that, guys. Look at this library. 
absolute talent, I've got to say. Absolute talent. I want to like visit here in real life. Oh, if you squeeze by here, you get to go to this amazing use. What an amazing use of, oh, can I fit? There we go. This amazing use of this little rock formation over here. It's just, you can sit here and just enjoy the sunset with my tour guide. This is just, <laughs> what amazing design. Guys, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. It's dynamic. <laughs> but again, we're going back through this library. I just have to take one look. Unfortunately, it was blocked by the house, but uh, we're going down here. This is just incredible terraforming in every single way. And now we're going through this beautiful lunar forest, I believe it is. <laughs> we have a mini library there. Okay, look at that flag. That's adorable. <laughs> oh, it looks like there's a lot of boxes outside of the nook shop. Oh, and I believe I lost my tour guide. Oh no, I've lost them. <laughs> They're going so fast. Oh, we have a transformer in silver. That's a really cool one. Ooh. <laughs> oh, we have a nice relaxing place here to eat. Oh, they have food. They have food right there. I can't see what one is that. Oh, it's like a cake or something. And again, look at this. Look at the, the way they have the city. They have little areas like that. So it feels like... An amazing city. A little bar uh, bike parking area. And beautiful flowers right there. Oh, and this is the Able Sisters. We run up here to another house. Now, this seems like the suburban area. You know, this isn't like the downtown city. This is like the beautiful parks. It feels so nice. Wow, they really have such a unique style. Look at this area. It's like a farming area. Look at this. This is just a beautiful farm. Little plots of farm with the irrigation uh, grates everywhere. That's what they are. They're irrigation grates, right? And just look at this. Some areas are tall, some are short, and we have a bamboo lunar forest. That that was the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Oh, there's a little memorial grave in the corner there. Oh, and a little hand-washing area. Or maybe that's not just for hand-washing. Maybe it has some more special purpose, but... Okay, just look at that terraforming right there. Look at that beautiful terraforming. And look at little touches like that, like the wood there. They use the log stakes to look like firewood, right? Oh, just so beautiful. And we have... Oh, wow. Look at that. That's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. And we're going to go through another forest. Look at this path. Every path they have is so well thought out. I'm in love with this island, guys. <laughs> Everywhere you look, and again, the use of decorative weeds is a really nice touch. You know, I'm one of those perfectionists that can't stand a single weed anywhere on my island whatsoever but honestly people use them so creatively it's impressive and this is a mini parquet here or rather a regular size parquet <laughs> considering parquets are always small but oh, i love it the little touches there oh no bullying bullying <laughs> this is bullying <laughs> <laughs> getting pushed around but enjoying every second of it <laughs> it's like stockholm syndrome right so <laughs> we're back near the irrigation area oh what area is this this area is a work in progress okay see so guys look at this even someone as talented as this Still has areas that are still under construction. You don't need to have it all figured out. I really like that path we just walked through. It's the second time we walked through it, and I enjoyed it just as much as the first. <clears throat> Let's just appreciate all the details they have everywhere. Like, look at this. It feels like a beautiful... Not a beautiful... It feels like a real lived-in city. It really, really does. Just... Just look at this area. Oh, they have their house here, but I found a beautiful angle. Look up there on the top right corner. One sec, I just want to quickly show you guys this. Look at that. That is stunning. Okay, now to go back. 
Now to go inside the house. And inside the house. Oh, they have that music that I always love. <laughs> I love the music that they're playing. <laughs> Live music. And we have all the little pets. Oh, that's adorable. They have every type of hamster. <laughs> really feels like a comfy, cozy house. That is just perfect. And now we are into this room. Wow, this room really feels... It's... I love it. They made two rooms in one. We have the kitchen over here. It feels like an actual apartment with the fans everywhere. Oh, and the way that they use the bunk bed. I didn't know you could actually put things on the uh, bottom shelf of the bunk bed. And again, the music is just so serene. I love that music. As we enter the living room and go to the right, I'm going to guess a bathroom. Oh, I was completely wrong. And this feels like such a comfy room. Oh my goodness. From the the bed. I don't know what it is about having the bed on the floor and just everything on the floor. It just feels really, really thematic and just so comfortable, you know? I just want to come in here during like a rainy day and just cuddle up in that bed with a book, you know, right by the, the bamboo lantern right there. I'm loving how cozy this house feels, honestly. All right, and we are back in here, going to the northern room. <coughs> and this northern room is a study. Oh, it's like a study and they have a little... <laughs> They're screaming orders at me. <laughs> so adorable. So this is like the office. Are, are these all different rooms in an apartment building? Is that what it's supposed to be? You know what? I think that's what it is. They're all individual houses because they all seem to have everything except for a bathroom, but maybe they have a communal one. And now it's time for upstairs. I'm not sure which way my tour guide went, but I think they went up here. Okay, I think they went downstairs. I went the wrong way. They actually went downstairs. <laughs> and we are here in... Oh, with that lighting. Wow, guys, this, this is so pretty. I'm speechless. It's just the lighting is perfect. The song is perfect. Look at the way the camera does that depth of field. Oh, I just really like this room. Oh my goodness, I see a gong. Sorry guys, I'm ruining the mood. <laughs> I have to get to that gong. No, I can't get to the gong. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the second island where I've seen a gong and haven't been able to hit it. Oh, and we are upstairs. And this beautiful library. They really like libraries. And I agree. And again, this look at this lighting. I am such a fan of this lighting. Wow. I really, really love the mood lighting here. I just want to hang out in this room all day. Don't you guys? Wow, this is really well done. <laughs> I just messaged the creator saying, Oh no, the gong, I couldn't hit it. And they just replied, Ha ha ha, suck it. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> they really want me to suffer, huh? Now that the lights are on, we're going to travel back to that absolutely stunning library they created because when the lights are on on this island, as you guys have probably noticed, it looks amazing. If the house is anything to go on, I bet that the lighting in this island is even better at night, which is exactly why we are visiting right now at sunset. And look at this view, guys. Oh my gosh. I really wish it didn't fade out in the background, but just look at the silhouettes of the trees. And look at the lights and how they glow. This is unbelievable. And now guys, it's time for the interview portion. And we are here with the creator of this beautiful island, Cheryl. And Cheryl, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for that. That was such a fun island to tour. And uh, the library was stunning. And then I love the way that you took me through the island too. It was really good that you led the tour, not me. <laughs>
kind of worrying about that because I was like, there's actually so many ways to go through my island. I'm like, which way is actually good? I was like half tempted to let you go first, but then I was like, nah, nah. It's probably be it's probably better for like the experience. Well, yeah, I miss I would have missed all those really cool parkour things. I loved jumping rooftop to rooftop. That was that was really cool. I have a happy accident because I was inspired off someone else's build. But then when I tried to make that area, I was like, what if I just could walk around it? And then that happened. Well, there you go. That's perfect. <laughs> so tell us a bit about yourself. I'm a freelance illustrator from Hong Kong, and I like to draw backgrounds with hamsters in them because hamsters are good. <laughs> what an introduction. I love it. I love it. And how many hours have you spent on your island? Let me check my Switch. So I've played for about 400 hours. 400 oh, plus hours. That's crazy. 400 plus. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, it's at 420, but I don't want to say it because it's like, I don't want memes in your comments. Oh, too late now. Too, no. too late. <laughs> I can already hear the no. comments. <laughs> no. So first off, I want to ask what made you decide on your theme. But first, I, what, how would you describe your theme, actually? I mean, it's pretty similar to how I draw because like, I really like a variety of architecture in real life and how others like interpret that kind of same thing. So it's like if I decide on a specific style or like a setting for one zone of my island, I'll just do it. Oh, okay. Like it, it doesn't matter to me whether it matches or not. If I think of, if I think it looks cool, I'll just do it. Mm -hmm. Because like my pieces are sometimes like I have some pieces that are like isolated environments and then it's like I feel like that's sort of been implemented in my island. I don't know how, but it did. And then, the, and I was like, oh, okay, I see how it is. And then the fun part is trying to make sure each area leads into each other seamlessly in a way. Yeah, that, that's the hard part. And yeah, I did, I did notice that. But I, like, there's some islands that I've been to where the themes are just drastically different. But you somehow made like a lunar forest with that library all fit in. And I think it's because it's all so like almost whimsical you know what i mean the the way you have everything it's all fantastical in a way you know the library just isn't you know it's something not quite right but it's right <laughs> you know what i mean i actually learned something similar because um because i was in the disney imagineering contest a few years ago oh wow and we had a tour by the art director of the imagineering team and we asked him to like explain about like the, the story behind the design of the park so one of the things he was talking about is because they have different areas between the zones. Like, you know, you have Adventureland and you have Tomorrowland, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So one of their challenges was to see, like, how to immerse the guests. Because the important thing is to immerse the guests in the environment. So they would have different things like music to change the direction of the guests walking through from one area to the other. And I thought about that a lot. I'm like, damn, I want to do that. <laughs> so I used that kind of same kind of philosophy that I learned from that time and I'm like yes good stuff right there yeah good stuff good stuff. make notes make notes <laughs> <laughs> and out of all those areas that you've created if you could only pick one what would it be what's your favorite the alleyway behind the museum oh that part yeah that because because I actually put the museum there first and then I built the thing behind it. I like it specifically because you don't see the alleyway until you walk behind the museum. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> perfect. Good use of camera. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. When we first got there, I was wondering. I'm like, you were standing outside there. I'm like, what? Why are we here? Why are they? What? Why are they standing there? And and then you went in, and I saw the path. I was like, oh, it all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that kind of thing. Yeah, me too. Like, I yeah. thought I love hidden things. Ever since I was a kid, I like little tucked away. <laughs> You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. It's like hidden, but also not really hidden. Absolutely. <laughs> because you can still, yeah, because like the part to like the left of it, I still had that pathway along the side of the cliff. So you could still see it. So it's like sort of in your peripheral kind of thing. So you're aware it's there, but it's like you can't go over there yet. So I like kind of playing with that thing. It's like, I'm not, I'm not sure how to explain it. It's like, it's in it's in the distance. You know you can get there, but where you currently are, you can't kind of thing. Mm -hmm. it, gives, it gives like a fun sense of mystery, I think. Yeah, and exploration too. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice. And you kind of touched on it just a second ago with the museum, how you, it seemed like you went with the flow with that, but what would you say your process is when creating different areas? 
if something feels good, I hone in on it. Well said. There you go. <laughs> yeah. well, it's, more like, it's more like I just like, I collect. It's kind of like when I do with art, right? I just collect a lot of image references. I look at a lot of different things. I let some ideas sit for a while and they don't feel right. Like the part on the left side of my island was where I was originally going to put the outdoor library. But because like I poked around with it a bunch of times, it didn't feel right. So I just went and did the area behind the museum then. And then I was like, okay, I need to actually do something about this empty area above it because it was like completely mm -hmm. empty, right? And then I was like, what if I put the outdoor library there? And then just so happened, my friend had like um, books for sale in their nooks cranny. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. And then I got 18 bookshelves made, which oh, is wow. insane. But it was worth it. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, let's go. And then I finished it. <laughs> and in creating all of these things, uh, you mentioned the library. It was kind of just like building on itself. But did you ever run into like really problems or predicaments and what would you say the hardest part of creating your island was not being able to stop building <laughs> <laughs> no it's um well it's similar to the creative process in general i think like you have certain ideas but it hasn't like quite clicked in your mind yet so i think to some extent it's like letting it sit there for a while until you can be like oh okay i finally have like some furniture items that i think would suit this area like getting like a cohesive kind of color scheme because i think that matters a lot to the way i construct an area because it's like oh i can put this and this together and then i can expand it a bit and then repeat the same elements throughout because it's like it gives a sense of unity to the area like ties in the theme in a way mm -hmm. no i completely agree that's a really important part and i noticed when we were walking around your island, there was one part that was just blank and you said it was a work in progress. Do you have any plans for that? I think that area was going to be like a small farmer's market in the thing. <clears throat> so I'll have like a small elevator to the left side and that will be selling like fruit and veggies when they implement it or something. I don't know. Um, and then the right side, I was like, I was going to move the Able Sisters there, but I think they're fine being on the bottom left side of the island. But I'm going to put some villager houses there. And then put like maybe a flower patch or something, and then put like a, a kiln, a pottery area. Oh, in front that's of such the a house. good idea. So yeah. So maybe like the villager can like host some pottery sessions to make with the other villagers. That's really cool. And yeah, you have yeah. to make sure you leave areas open for the future updates, as you mentioned, like the fruits and veggies mm -hmm, that are mm -hmm. rumored to come out. That's going to be really mm -hmm. exciting. Oh, because like. One of my earlier ideas of my island, um, because the top left area was where I started first building, I was like, I want each villager to have a purpose in my town. Like, I don't put them there because they're there. I put them there because they have, like, a specific area around it that they interact with. Mm -hmm. So I use that kind of storytelling to, like, inform the way I design as well. So it's that kind of thing. So, like, if I put another villager there like they're in charge of that area but then I had like a bunch of villagers around my rice paddy area and I'm like okay so when they come out in the morning they can tend to the fields kind of thing oh that's so charming I love it I love that idea and for your house I I for starters I loved it but I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what it was was it meant to be like multiple apartment rooms because all the the rooms seem to have like their own you could live in one room essentially I've never actually thought of it that way. <laughs> I think it just came out naturally. <laughs> it's more like because I'm collecting a lot of different furniture items and wallpapers as I go with like Sahara and they look, look cranny unlocking a bunch of stuff. I was like, oh, this could look good in this room. And I don't like particularly care for like overall cohesiveness of the house. I'm like, this would suit this room. Let's put it in there. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, and and I yeah, but how I read it at least was that it was like different apartment rooms that you could live in individually. They all they all had a bed. They all seemed like have like either like a kitchen area. Or some of them even had like the bathroom. It was I really liked it. And uh, my question is is you do you live in a big city? Like you live in Hong Kong, right? But like the downtown area. Yeah, yeah I live in an apartment. So maybe that kind of influenced you there, did it? I I'm just like wow you had the insight I didn't even see that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I'm in I'm in 2040 here you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would imagine that influence probably bled in a little bit and so 
obviously you're making a lot of updates as you go to your island and creating a lot more areas. And do you have any social media that people can keep up to date with your progress or just follow you on? My main account is at SciSketch, but I post all my Animal Crossing content on at Slice of Sci. Oh, okay, yeah, because I, I know that I we mentioned earlier and I mentioned during the video that a lot of your designs seem to be based on your art, your very unique art style. And um, actually, I'm going to get your permission right now. Can I take uh, an image that you've created and like put it up on the screen so people can keep it in mind at the beginning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, good, because I think that'll just enhance it. Because I know when I was going through, I saw, I saw like... Uh, the correlation it was really really awesome so yeah uh, I think people will be really interested in following you and checking out your art in general my final question is do you have any advice to the people watching right now I think because Animal Crossing is such a creative game and there's all these like so many influences and stuff that's happening with it I think it's also a good um, it's a good idea to sometimes take a break and not look at what other people are doing for a while so you can let ideas manifest in your head and then just start see if you can like recreate it in your own way without looking directly at the source. Because I think like people try to copy directly a bit too much, which is fine. It's totally valid. But I think the fun of it is also just like seeing what kind of materials and furniture items that you have. And then you can just be like, oh, what if I combine this thing with this thing? Boom. <laughs> Magic. Like, <laughs> like I made like I made my park first and then I was like, can I like it looks too boring because it's just trees and I was like, can I just put the robot in there? Because I've had that <laughs> robot for a while and I don't know what to do with it and I put it there. I'm like, yes! Park for the robot. <laughs> Yeah, I I, I, yeah. I I sort of preach that sort of thing. Like you you t find your favorite thing and build around yeah. it, you know? Like it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is, just freaking do it. <laughs> right? I agree. <laughs> And I think, like, Minecraft is amazing. Mm -hmm. I'll just preach that. <laughs> it's like, no, actually, like, before the game came out, I went into Minecraft and I built out my villager my, my villager area because I was like, I want to actually freaking try to make it. So I did it. <laughs> and I think it helped in a way, but also it was like building in-game is like a completely different thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think uh, one other thing that helped me a lot was I would take screenshots of a map and draw directly over it. Because I tried the island designer, but it wasn't as intuitive as I felt it was because I couldn't write my notes on it, right? Uh, yeah. And I can draw faster. So I was like, I just take a screenshot of my map and I draw over it so I could mark out like, oh, this area is going to be the onsen, which never happened. And it's not going to happen because it doesn't suit my island now. <laughs> and then it's like, and I just make like multiple iterations of the map. I always keep uploading screenshots, draw over it, go build, rinse and repeat, that kind of, that kind of thing. So it's like a constant back and forth mm -hmm. thing. And then sometimes I would have like my friends come over and give me feedback on like ideas of what I could add. And then I'll just try it out anyway to see if it works kind of thing. So I think it's like have an open mind and see what happens. Wow, thank you. That was that was great advice there. I think uh, you really went over everything from like the planning to execution in that. So uh, I think you've motivated a lot of people there. And uh, I completely agree with everything you said. Well, I think that's it for all of the questions. Again, I want to say thank you so much, Cheryl, for this amazing tour and giving me the privilege to come and record it. And also thank you for your amazing answers and insight into your design process and everything. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to all my randomness. <laughs> I loved it. It's super <laughs> fun. Super fun. <laughs> And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Remember, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications so that YouTube knows that you like this and you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you want to join our amazing Discord community, make sure you go to the video description and click the invite link. And if you want to submit your island for a tour, go just below that Discord link and click the island submission Google Forms link. And as usual, I'll see you guys in the next video.